ATTR in general is the, probably now the most common type of cardiac amyloidosis. And we have two types. We have the wild type, uh, which is random um, thing, and we have the hereditary type. Um, it's quite interesting that uh, the patients that we diagnosed in Jordan are mostly uh, the hereditary type and not the wild type in contrast to what we see in other parts of the world. So by, this is why itself is, is very exciting to us. Not only that, but also the mutations, the genetic mutations, the problems that cause the disease are different also, I think, uh, in, in our part of the world than what we see prevalent in other parts of the world. So, so when, when you talk about the wild type uh, HTR amyloidosis, there is no specific cause. We know it happens in the older population, usually men more than women, but there is no genetic basis for it. So it's just a random thing. But when you talk about hereditary, it's a disease that affects family members. So that every time we diagnose a patient, we have to also screen the first degree relatives of that patient because What's happening now is that most of the patients that are diagnosed with ATTR amyloidosis, regardless whether they're wild type or hereditary, are diagnosed late in their disease, when the disease is already very well established and they're like late um, in, in the course of the disease. And we don't want that to continue. We want to be able to diagnose patients early on before the disease affects the heart in a bad way, before it affects the kidneys, before it affects the liver, so that we can help them uh, in, a, in a better way. So the sooner you discover the disease, the better your success with management will be. So that's what we're hoping for. So every time we, we discover a case with hereditary amyloidosis, ATR amyloidosis, we advise family screening. And uh, once you detect a genetic mutation similar to the index case, then you have to see if that patient has any signs of the disease, even the very early signs, which will give you an opportunity to start treating these patients before the disease is manifested in, in, in very bad ways. There are therapies coming out. And in, in ATTR, um, um, if it's purely uh, cardiac um, ATTR amyloidosis, then the treatment of choice now is the families. It's, a, it's a, an ATTR protein stabilizer, so it reduces the amount of uh, abnormal proteins that eventually turn into amyloid fibers and deposit in organs, causing organ dysfunction. We have also different other different therapies that are um, um, indicated or be, can be given to patients who have a, a combination of cardiac and also neurologic uh, manifestations, which, very, which are very common in patients with hereditary type of amyloidosis. Things like uh, um, uh, uh, gene silencers that work on the liver, which is the source of production of these proteins. Uh, we have inotercin, we have uh, a couple of other medications that are uh, present that can be given to these patients and help in reducing the amount of protein produced uh, by, by the liver. So we have medication that reduce the production of the abnormal protein. We have uh, medications that uh, stabilize um, the, uh, the, the abnormal ATTR, preventing its deposition in organs, but we're hoping for, and uh, I know there's a lot of research work on this, that also to target the amyloid fibers that are already deposited in the organs. So imagine if you can also uh, cause uh, dissolution or um, disappearance of these uh, fibrils in, in, in the different organs of the body, then you can actually reverse the, uh, uh, the problems caused by the amyloid fibers deposition, and you can also improve the heart and improve the kidneys and improve the, the neurological system. And that's, that's really what we're hoping for. And I think we will have good news in the next uh, few years.